You are listening to ViewSource, conversations around WordPress and adjacent tech with hosts Ruba Ahmed and me, Brian Kortz. Brian, how's it going? It's good. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Recording in a morning, which is not like normal for us. <laughs> it feels very weird. I'm glad you addressed that. It feels very weird to record in the morning. Yes, yes. All right. So WordPress 6.5 is about to re be released soon as we record this. How are you feeling about it? Yeah, I mean, it's been an interesting one, I guess. It's been an interesting release. I feel like I've been the closest to watching a release that I've ever been. And so seeing yeah. how the decisions are made, actually having conversations with people, uh, it's been very fascinating <laughs> to watch, I yeah. guess, is the word I would use. And I'm not surprised. And I guess I haven't been as close this time, but it's been really interesting to not be close. It's been interesting to watch it evolve and have see all these other people having these conversations and not be quite as invested in them as I normally am. So it's been a it's been a different experience for me too, in a in the opposite way, I suppose. Yeah, and it's I would say it feels to be a very developer focused release, and that maybe that's just like my brain has been on like developer mode of WordPress recently, but it's like you go through the list of features and it's all like, this will be really cool for developers three releases from now, but it's coming, like, yeah. but the, the foundations are coming and it's a lot of those things happening. A lot of APIs, a lot of new APIs. I agree. You know, something that I've been thinking about a lot recently is how important it is to think about the plumbing of things and think about the foundations of how something is done before just jumping straight into like, oh, you know, the shiny parts of that. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that we're doing a little plumbing and we're separating that out from the UI and other ways that we can take advantage of the plumbing, giving it some time to, I don't know, marinate, I guess. I don't know what the right mm -hmm. word is here, but you know what I mean? Like, I, I like that. I, I like that we'll have the opportunity to play with it before it becomes like a solid UI focused feature, like say with like block bindings and other things like that. Yeah. And it's like, it's kind of a weird mix because on the one hand, like you want people to play with these things, to give feedback early, to actually help improve and say like, Hey, this is the use case. This is what it would work, whatever. But like there's like 50 things happening. So you can't really invest time in all of these things. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. there's only so much you can look at. And even though the Gutenberg plugin is that place to like play with the experiments and stuff, there's only so much time in the day. At some point, they do have to put things in the core a little bit just to kind of push people to play with it. But it's funny because I think today's feature that we're talking about is definitely the longest journey of like places where the plumbing really came in early, places where the plumbing came in late, and places where, as of, you know, today, the plumbing is still up for debate. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the feature we're talking about, obviously, if you haven't already guessed, maybe you've guessed from the title. I don't think we've decided on title yet, but probably the title we'll say is the font library, the font manager. Font library? I think it's officially called the font library, right? There. <laughs> The naming, just the naming alone is like, we could do a whole episode of font, font families, font collections, font faces, oh, yes. like all these things. I mean, like I, the other day I was on a video and I was like, why do they call like bold, you know, where you pick like bold, semi bold, yes. like, why do they call it appearance? Why not call it weight? And then someone's like, well, it's not just weight. It also has like font, like style and font weight yeah. combined together. So you can't call right. it. It's like. Just the naming of things is like yeah. bananas. Or maybe sometimes. like font format. Here we go. There's another option. I just, my recent opinion has been like, name it what it is in CSS, because then at least there's a reference. Like there's at least a, a source of truth. If we, if we name things not what they are in CSS, then it's harder for people to learn what they mean. You know what I mean? I call them Google Docs. That's what I want to know. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pull up a Google doc right now because, you know, in those kinds of situations, that's where you see the font way and the font style combined usually. Mm -hmm. Right. So I guess in Google docs, you have the bold and you have the, so that's, that's not a good, that's not a good solution. Probably I'd have to check Figma because in Figma, well, in Google you, fonts, know... you can like, it's like a tree. Like you can kind of like get your font and then you can like expand. It's interesting. While you do that, I'm going to pull up, I'm going to pull up my screen. 
Yes. So let's start off with that tour. So Brian's going to take us on a tour of the Font Library feature, and then we'll kind of dig into a little bit more of the evolution of how we actually ended up here. But let's find out where we ended up first. <laughs> so I'm sharing my screen and I'm looking at make WordPress core, make.wordpress.org slash core slash 6.5. I actually just learned this, that you can type slash core mm -hmm. slash the name of a release or like the the version of a release. And it'll take you to like the main landing page that has literally everything you need to know. The link to the field guide, which just came out, the all yeah. the agendas, the release team, um, everything, you know, all the way down to like the release schedule where you can find like what's the latest release, you know, beta version that I can play with. Did you know about this? Yeah. I mean, I knew about I the page. Did. <laughs> like I know that you it's always here in the sidebar, but I didn't know you could like the URL was that like consistent. I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a really solid, solid, I believe it's a tag. It could be a tag. I don't have to check, but it's either a tag. It's a tech. It's, it's a really solid taxonomy and they've been using it for a while now. Makes yeah. things very convenient. Yeah, for sure. So I'm, I'm going to go to release candidate too. And I just want to show this because like, I think it's crazy with playground, how easy it is now to just like play with the new stuff, test it out, low stakes, just be like, I just want to see what it looks like in the new version. Yeah. We should totally do an episode if we can or find some way to do like a longer conversation on the playground because the playground is amazing. And now there's a plugin for it. You can, oh, the possibilities oh. of playground is wild. They're, they're wild. <laughs> yeah. The, the code block plugin, which they're going to probably start using on like the training website. So like yes. in the tutorials, you can actually like, oh yeah, there's all sorts yeah. of stuff. And on here, so this is the most recent release. I've been using the, the WP CLI command, like, with I use local for my local environment. So mm -hmm. on a few sites, I've been slowly updating to release candidates just to kind of be see what how the sites run on the newer version. And the fact that it's like one line that you just type in and local yeah. makes it easy. So that's another way to get this. And can I say how nice it is that they have laid it out this way? Because it wasn't always like that, where you had yeah. just like this really nice little table almost on the release candidate page. And you're like, here's all the ways that you can update this or test this. It's so it's so clear and makes it so easy for someone who might be new to like trying to test something. So, and it's still really convenient for those of us who have tested before, you know, you either click it or, you know, see the command or start a playground. I mean, some of the thought that's being put behind so many different parts of how make works and demonstrates work. It, it's, it's fantastic. It's very appreciated. Yeah. I th and I think like, that's one thing people don't like, they just think about what's in happening in core WordPress, but like, they forget, like there's a larger machine, behind it that has like basically like the whole yeah. meta side of things. And like, there's, you know, a lot of improvements coming. There's the playground integration with the plugin directory that I think is now finally kind of coming Yes, all sorts of, I mean, yeah, we could go on. All right. I'm going to, so I've pulled up, I hit the link. This is a playground WordPress playground. If you don't know, it's WordPress in your browser. We're on WordPress 6.5 release candidate two right here. And I'm going to open yep. the site editor. Let's do it. Site editor. <laughs> yes that deserves another dis a discussion of its own for sure <laughs> yeah do you remember that one episode we scrapped that was about the site editor and then it wasn't gonna come and then we had to scrap our entire episode oh yeah <laughs> have we been doing this that long yes what? we've been doing it that long <laughs> yeah i forgot about that honestly i'm not gonna lie my memory goes back like 12 months 18 months if i'm lucky <laughs> that's about it this podcast has not been alive for 18 months yet. Yeah. Well, pretty, I'm all, I'm, I'm warning you, I'm going to start losing episodes pretty soon. All right, let's, so actually what I've been doing is I've been doing command palette in the site editor. I've gotten really used right. to it. It's a really yes. good power user tool. This whole sidebar over here, I just get mad at. So I just right. avoid it if I can. So, so you're just see. getting rid of it by clicking, right? You just hit command K and now you've got the command palette open. Yeah. I was just like click into the site. I mean, there's other issues with that too, but I just like kind of click in and get into right. the site editor without that sidebar. And then I command K. Oh, yep. this time it doesn't recommend. Last time it recommended something. Yeah. It um, did. Maybe it's because you were in that templates area. So it had some sort of hint for what you were trying to do. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That makes sense. I can okay. see why. Uh, th this is basically the four main categories on the sidebar on the yes. outermost level, except yeah. um, patterns is missing. Okay. So, ready? Styles? Yeah, let's do it. 
So there actually is an issue in a PR to move pretty much all the style management to here instead to of having to, yeah, instead of having to click over into this other panel here. I'm Which I think makes a lot of, of sense. Yeah, I, I I really like that. One, it's just by default a little bit wider and it gives you a little bit more breathing room when you're looking at all of it. And I like that separation. Like I know that the styles area is separate from the inspector, the sidebar of the block editor, but I like how like it makes you think about how it's about your whole site and not just about this one page. It makes that a lot more clear than when you're using the style sidebar in this editor context versus in the site editor context. So I really like that. Yeah, like it's you're doing global things to your site. Things that feel global and stuff should really happen on that left hand side and things that yeah. are fundamental to like the structure of your site and stuff like that. And this right hand Definitely. side, yeah, should really be specific to the page or the individual block. And it's like if they yeah. the more they can separate that, I think that's gonna make life easier. And then yeah, I don't know. I would love to see this go away from here, if I'm completely honest. I would be like, yeah. you, this doesn't need to be here. If you want to affect global something globally, go to the site editor context. Yeah. Yes. So we're we're just running 2024 theme because that's just the kind of default. So this is like the default experience people are going to get. So we're going to open the typography panel in the styles sidebar, and you'll basically see once you open typography, you have the option to manage your fonts. And then the option to manage elements, which I guess basically means like where the fonts apply or like where all your typography settings apply to specific elements. So right. it's an interesting hierarchy. Like, I, I guess it makes sense. I mean, I remember how contentious it was to make captions editable in the elements oh. area. So, you know, I'm looking forward to the time when all text elements, or at least some of the more major text elements are all in here, you know? I mean, a lot of them are in here now, like headings, links, yeah, like, regular text, buttons. Well, why wouldn't, yeah, because like, like the next thing I'm thinking is list items, right? Like list items exactly. <laughs> generally need to be styled. But yes. then why wouldn't I style that through the list block? But then buttons is here and that's a block. So like, how do you make that decision? That could be a whole conversation, but the, but I think for me, it's like list elements are not just the list, like it's not just an unordered list or ordered list. There's also like definitions, for example, there's so many types of lists in HTML elements and it would, that's probably why it's not in here because how do you decide, like you said, how do you decide what you style and in what, where it should be affected. But then the same thing could be said about headings. Why am I doing it here instead of styling it through the heading block? Well, yeah, and that's, I think that's something we discovered where when we were building out stuff in theme JSON, like theme JSON has this elements section where you're actually yeah. styling the HTML element, not the block. Yes. And it, it's like, it kind of like in some ways you think, oh, well, that'd be great because like if I style buttons here, every form plugin should take those styles and stuff. I mean, most of them don't, you but would you would think, think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, same thing for links. I mean, there. understand it makes sense why it's global, but then it doesn't work the way you expect. So, <laughs> yeah, like links and text, like those make sense because that's so across multiple blocks. So that it's yeah, very clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so at the top, though, that's like where our focus is, where you can right now yeah. I can see there's four fonts and there's three variants of the Cardo font, one variant of the Inter font, one variant of the System Sans Serif, and then one variant of the System Serif. And those are presumably active right now. Yeah, so I appreciate that they're bundling system fonts because there's not really an option for that. So your theme has to support it. So it's kind of nice that the default theme supports it since right. so many people are using this theme like as their starter. I mean, they, the amount of people yeah. using this as a starter theme is nuts, I feel like compared to normal default themes. Or at yeah, least I mean, the last like, five years. I think 2010 or 2011. I think it was 2010 or 2011. One of those themes was also, it was a big game changer and a lot of people used it as their default. I remember as a much younger person taking an entire course on how to customize it. And mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was a big deal. So this feels like that, you know, it has that kind of legitimate power and potential, which is really impressive. So I've never clicked on one of these. I've always <laughs> gone through this icon and there's there was that whole discussion about the making like why is this one here but this one's this or you know like making these different yeah. icons more consistent i'm curious just what happens if i click okay so it's the same thing it opens the same thing okay no does i don't do anything? oh it does oh it does it just brings you in deeper 
Yes. So this takes that into a modal. A few minutes later. Okay. So we are back, <laughs> barring some major technical difficulties. I think to summarize, this is the second time I'm summarizing it because I also lost my internet for a minute. <laughs> but WordPress Playground does not want to play nice with me today. It works for you. It's for whatever reason not working for me. And I don't feel like restarting my browser. So I'm switching over to just a local development version of WordPress. I just spun up in local WP another version of the WordPress beta using that CLI command that was that we talked about earlier. Yeah. And so we're at the same spot. Let's open the font library and talk about Google fonts and fonts in general. Yeah. So right now we're looking at that modal and it's showing us all the fonts that are active. So right now we're seeing the same information that we can see in that sidebar, right? And then we yeah, have those three menu items at the top. Yeah, exactly. I, well, I, it also goes back to our discussion of like, if this say this turned out to be on the left-hand side of the screen, there's actually UIs coming that maybe there's like additional panels that would come out, right. and like the data views and all that sort of stuff. And so I think it needs to be like, okay, for the site editor to like take over your screen, if that makes sense. Like, any, like, there's no reason why I couldn't have like my left sidebar and like the, instead of a modal, this just be the content right now yeah. because it's already blocking the content. Exactly. So you why, can't see it anyway. Just... Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that would be, I think that would make a lot of sense. And I mean, we have this whole thing where the site editor will eventually become, you know, the entire dashboard. I think that's the, that's the hope. So at some point it does need to be okay to take over the whole thing. <laughs> And in such yeah. situations, it does, right? Like when you, back when the site editor was first introduced, there were views in the site editor where you didn't see the site at all. And you had like your templates and stuff that you would have. So it should be all right. Yeah. And there's, and I think we we won't get into it today, but I think there's some changes to like how the template library looks now yeah, and patterns exactly. stuff. So a lot of that and like the data views is kind of in, coming in core mm -hmm. under the hood right now. Mm -hmm. So so on this site, by default, 2024 loads six variants of a font and a variant could be like bold, italics, you know, that sort of stuff. Two of them are system fonts. So I don't count those as much because they're not like a resource that we're loading in. But I think really the big concept here is that fonts are an external resource. And that is <laughs> really the whole discussion of what of what's happening with the font library. Yeah. So right now we're loading four variants of a font. And that's site wide, right? Like, I mean, that's four font files. Yeah, that's four. I mean, let's be honest. I think we've definitely done more than that in a theme before. <laughs> so I feel like this is yeah. a very reasonable number for a theme to have. Yeah, I think four is about, I mean. Right. I, yeah. And so you can come in and you can basically, if you uncheck it, now it's not going to show up. It's not going to be act like it's installed on your site, but it's not like actively enabled throughout your site. So you won't see it as, as an option in the yeah. drop down. You won't see it on the front end. Now, I think the really interesting part here is to show that when you click into enter, so click into it for a second, see how it says enter 300, 900. This is because it's a variable font. So it's really one variant mm -hmm. that can act as many things. Whereas when you Ooh. open up Cardo, right, Cardo uh -huh. is actually separate. So you have Cardo normal, Cardo bold, Cardo normal italic. So this is, I think, where the power of variant variable fonts is going to really start to shine because you have this one file that can do so much versus having to put so many extra resources to be able to have those different styles. And it's maybe more obvious now than it ever has been, at least inside WordPress. And what do you think of this verbiage? Keep in mind that too many variants could make your site slower. Like on the one hand, it's helpful, but on the other hand, it's not because it doesn't say what too many variants are. Yeah. Like what's the person? Oh, like, well, I have less than 20. That's not too many, right? Like, I, you know. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting. It should have a learn more. It needs a learn more link. <laughs> Links to support. Yeah. To the support site. Yeah. 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 To explain um, because, I mean, that's just not enough information. And even now, like... I know what that might mean because I'm a dev, but this is not yeah. just available to devs. So this is verbiage that could be really confusing and maybe even concerning for certain people. And then you don't have a way to like go look for some more information that's guided that that's a miss, but also something that can be improved very easily. Yeah. So you can upload new fonts. So like you have the actual font files, you can upload them. 
or you can choose to connect to Google fonts and install a font. Should we install a font? Yeah, let's do it. I'm really happy about this. So all, we all know that, you know, it's not GDPR friendly anymore to host, to use hosted Google fonts. However, this is really nice. And this has like a long history of like six version history in WordPress. But now when you're going to select some, it's just going to install them locally. And then it's going to be a completely GDPR friendly Google font. We should go back in time and pop in a railway. Oh, man. And- how many sites did you do with Railway? We should put all 18 I, variants. My in site too. still has Railway on it. And oh, I I still, I, I sometimes I look at that W and I'm just like, I've had enough of the Railway W. I've had enough. The w. It's the One dead day. giveaway. Yes. Um, One day I'm going to get it and I'm going to change it. Uh, yeah. It's honestly, I since switching to full site editing for my personal site, I mean, right now I'm using Inter because I feel like every developer has to use Inter as their font. That's just the rule. But so I do love that I, it's nice to, you can just like, Hey, let's, let yeah. me change my fonts. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So I have installed railway two versions. You'll notice that once you install it, you can't uninstall it, but you can disable it. But the font sits, I mean, it's there. Yeah. It's on your server Yeah, in its little special directory. Yeah. I think it's, it's okay that in the first version you can't. I'm a, I'm okay with it, but that should come. Yeah, you should have the ability to okay. to remove it. I mean, it's like media, right? You can delete your media, so you should be able to delete these fonts. There, there, it is in a deletable directory. <laughs> it's supposed to. Be. Yeah, the, no, yeah, that's definitely. I would be shocked if there wasn't already plans for that, an issue for that. I'm going to turn off Cardo, and I'm going to turn on Railway, and I'm going to hit update. And this is my favorite: is when you hit update, I expect the modal to close. I don't expect don't it you? to close. I just hit, I like, this This doesn't feel to... like a thing, like, I'm done. No, because you there's more than one thing you can do in here, and it's not a save. It's not like a, I mean, it is a save. But it is a save. It is a save, but it's a save for that particular font, but you can do other things in here. I What if I wanted to disable more than one font? I would hate it if it closed the modal on me after one save. I don't know. I disagree. I just feel like when a button is down at the bottom in the right hand side, like that is a a clear indicator that I'm going somewhere else, that I'm continuing through the process to a new. I agree with that. So, but I think that means that the placement of the button is wrong, not that the button itself is wrong (laughs) because it should probably be in the top. Like how we have published the image and everything inside the block editor. That would probably make more sense. And it would save space actually. (laughs) Yeah, it'd be a little more like breathable if it was like up yeah. here, like save changes or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So you're right, though. Yeah. yeah. At the bottom corner, you do it does make you think it's going to go away. But I wouldn't want it to go away. So therefore, it should just not be at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a whole interesting conversation about that and about just like in the site editor, there's so many things where like, I guess I would want to save it more like, when I finish editing one part and I move to the next, I kind of want to save it, but it kind of waits until the end. And then it gives you like all your changes and there's really no right or wrong answer there, but it's like yeah. an interesting thing. Yeah. I, 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 I do believe that the concept of autosave should be used more in the site editor and it's not right now. Not really, you know? Yeah. 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 All right. I'm going to put railway as our heading font because it's oh, time. let's do it. Flashbacks, yeah. flashbacks. <laughs> You know, sometimes I have a hard time looking at my own website because of railway. <laughs> I mean, you could probably change that pretty quickly. But lazy. So lazy. It didn't. Let me uh, save. You shouldn't have so to. So I saved it. Oh, yeah. there it is. I just had to refresh. I think that's mm. just a local issue. Yeah, it might be. Okay, I just refresh. See now, see, now it looks like railway. Yeah, it does. And now yeah. we have railway for our headings. Yeah. It's almost I wish I said site. the word WordPress. <laughs> So you could see it. Do it, do it. Add a type, make a type. Word, yeah, there is. <laughs> There's that W. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I mean, overall, that was a fairly painless experience if we cut out all the technical difficulties you had. <laughs> yeah. All those technical difficulties had nothing to do with WordPress and had a lot to do with just like the fact that we're recording in the morning. Yeah. That's my, that's what I'm blaming on it. Okay. So there's two other, like, I think important things about this font library. That's kind of what the UI is. I mean, I think that's great. I love it. It's yeah. It's a feature that it, we've all when they say like fake 
he was complete. This was part. <laughs> this needed to happen first. Yes, I you agree. Know? I agree. Yeah, we've all been waiting for it for some some version of this. We've all been waiting for it for six versions of WordPress. <laughs> yeah. So, can you give me like give me like the summary of the process getting to six point five, which as of like two weeks before, still was not sure it was going to ship a font library user interface. Yeah. But like this whole process goes back to five, nine, six, oh, five, nine. I mean, yeah. I mean, you have that open. So open up that tavern post. So this whole conversation, it's, it's, a, it's not exactly related, but it is related, right? But web fonts API, when the Google fonts GDPR issue happened, that's when the web fonts API became more of a, oh, we should do this because people really like using Google fonts. And it's like, pretty important for a lot of people and we want them to be able to have GDPR friendly websites and we need to be able to support a way for people to do this easily, you know, even if they're not developers. So web fonts API became more of a thing, but then there were all kinds of issues for why it couldn't happen. So then it got punted from 5.9 for good reasons. And then it landed in 6.0, but no, did it land in 6.0? I think it did land. Yeah, it did land. Because it landed with that and some support for for theme.json. So you could register fonts using theme.json and you could, I can't remember if you could, yeah, you could register it through the PHP as well, but it was very pared back. There was a very few features. It was just like a very basic registration and obviously there was no UI. And then there was this whole concept of, okay, we should make something like this happen in the UI itself. And it was, it, it, the work started on it. Then I think the first time it was going to show up was 6.3. Then it was punted because of all these problems. Then we thought it was going to be part of 6.4. Then it was punted from 6.4. And now we're finally at 6.5. And fingers crossed, it's actually going to land. <laughs> yeah, so, I, like, it's totally kind of important because there was like, Cut, themes were including ways to put Google fonts in and obviously all the page builders are too, but like yeah. even just like themes, like theme foresty themes were all in the customizer, adding integrations with Google custom fonts. every time yeah. for Google fonts. And so it's like, it was just one of those things that was like, it just made a lot of sense. And there was the GDPR concern and the way they got around it was saying like, well, we won't pull them from Google. Like we'll pull them and we'll save them locally. So you're not calling an external server. Yeah. And I think a lot of people at first were a little like upset about that. Like you're installing files on my whatever, but it was like, no, it was like actually a, a solid reason. And if you have a halfway decent host, then they should have some sort of good like CDN for assets and stuff. And I see font as similar to an image. Like it's an asset that gets loaded a lot. It needs to be, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't come, need to come from the server. It needs to come from the edge. Like it needs to be very quick and available and cached. Yeah. And so yeah. it's been a process and then, and then this release, it was, it's still a conversation. Yeah. It's still a conversation because there's functions that may still change their name <laughs> as of two oh, days yeah. ago from recording this. And we don't know if it's going to actually have the one, have the, the, the function names are going to be what the function names are right now, especially for customizing the font upload directory, which has been, you know, one of the more contentious issues this time around, because typically the only part of WordPress that you can put stuff in you know, using core typically is uploads, right? And well, I don't know if I agree with that. I can go into WordPress right now and I can install a plugin or a theme. I can drop a zip file directly into the interface and put something in there. That's but I think, well, I think half of it was that people felt like this is a media. So it should be like, it's not a it's not a media post type or an attachment post type. It's like its own post type. Right. And half of the conversation was like, like it's a, something somebody uploads into their site and we serve it as a resource. So why not put it as the same as every other f image and whatever, because then every plugin that does like offload media and all stuff will work automatically. Every host that like does yeah. special things for this, it'll work automatically because of all the hooks and filters that are in the attachment post type that have existed for 20 years. Now it's like a new post type. None of those apply. So none of those filters apply. None of those hooks are there. Yeah. It's completely brand new. And Almost then arguing that there's the directory. Kind of asset, right? I mean, you could argue that it's a different kind of asset. And so therefore it yeah. deserves to be treated differently and not immediately and by default have access to all, to all those filters. So I can understand that. And I understand the other side too. 
And I think that's the way they went. And they said like, nope, we need to like start thinking about new things and not just shoehorn it into an old way of thinking, which is also a very valid viewpoint. Yeah. But then they made the new, so like this right here yeah, you is change. where it's going to live. Yeah. WB and I mean, content slash like a fonts. whole thing. Yeah. Dope. I mean, I think it's, it's a small thing, but it's a big thing. You know what I mean? It's, it shows that we're not just doing like JavaScript innovation anymore in WordPress. We're really trying to modernize the whole, all of WordPress slowly, little by little. And there's excitement there. It's a really, really positive signal. Hello, and pardon the interruption. This is Brian coming from the future, the future of when, from when we recorded this, the past for you now listening to this. With a quick update, when we recorded this episode, WordPress 6.5 was th partially through its release process. I think we were looking at release candidate two as we were recording this. Since recording, they've made a few changes, including pushing the release back a week and reverting again the change to the fonts directory. So in this video, we're still talking about it being something like a WP content slash fonts for the fonts. That ended up being more work than they thought. They were trying to have a nice easy fallback for servers where it wouldn't work. That all kind of didn't pan out. So they ended up just reverting and putting the fonts under the uploads directory at the time of 6.5. So that might change in the future, but now it's a little different. So as you keep listening, we are talking possibly about it being a new folder in the WP content directory, but that ended up not being the case for WordPress 6.5. Just wanted to throw that in there and now take you back to our episode of the podcast. I think the negative part of it was that it was a decision that was made. And I think the problem is that it had a lot of implications and side effects for hosting companies. And I think what was learned from the process was like when that decision was made, there should have been way more outreach with hosting companies to say, Hey, this is cause like you said, like, yeah, it, 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 you are right. That like the uploads WP content slash uploads is treated very dis separately than themes and plugins, especially because themes and plugins can have like executable, like PHP code and stuff. So that's, what's a big difference than the uploads folder. And so there, there basically was no conversation and about a month before the release, a contributor was like, Hey, have we talked to hosting companies? Like, are they okay with us uploading file, letting users upload files into a new folder? Like, is that even going to work? And for some of the hosting companies, the answer was like, no, not without some work. I'm, I'm not going to lie in this situation. The onus is entirely on the hosting companies. You are using WordPress. You make money off yeah. of WordPress. It is entirely your responsibility to keep up with core and see what's going on and chime in when appropriate. It is not WordPress's job to go to the hosting companies and say, oh, by the way, you make money off my back. Is this going to be okay for you to keep making money? Like, like, I just don't think that's WordPress's problem. This is, the, this is a not even just like problem. Not even just like posting it in the hosting channel. Like, hey, this is an infrastructure change in the Slack, you know, hosting like channel and at least putting it there. You don't think like, I honestly, I think it worked out the way it worked out, which is like, it wasn't a known issue till it became a known issue and they had a month to deal with it and they've yeah. dealt with it. So like it, it all worked out, you know? Yeah. No, I, I think that, you know, there is some responsibility, like putting it in the hosting channel and thinking about that would have been good. But also if some contributors forgot that, I still don't think that the response, the, the, the bulk of the responsibility falls on them. I just don't think that, you know, they're not the, yes, we have sponsored contributors and all of that stuff, but it's an open source project. Y'all making money off of us. Great. You pay attention. You pay attention and make sure you can support this. So I, yeah. I'm okay with how it worked out and I'm okay. Even if hosting companies have thrown a fuss, I almost wish that they had. I'm, I almost wish that they hadn't been able to support it because that would expose the lack of attention they give to this thing that is so important to their business. Yeah. And so like in the conversation, the first two hosts they tagged were Pantheon and WordPress VIP because those are like yeah. the most unique where they really do take your uploads and then immediately put it to a different type of server versus like, yeah. you know, WP Engine where you can do that with like a, they have a really nice S3 integration and stuff, but it's not the default. So I think 
they they did it. And so the the compromise at the end of the day is that there's a filter, which honestly is a good at like should maybe just exist in general for 100%. these sort of situations. So you can filter and say like they can do a fallback and and put it in the uploads folder mm -hmm. if they want. Totally. I I think I just didn't like the idea that they just didn't like the way it looked. Like there was definitely like it, there's some messages in there where it's like, oh, it just doesn't look as good as being in uploads next to all those <laughs> date folders, uh, which isn't even like a default thing. Like that's not always the case. But yeah, I think it is default now. By default, it goes to dates. Or yeah, it's default, but it's not uh, required, I guess I That's should right. say. But, yeah, but uh, aesthetics of a URL are, especially a URL that isn't <laughs> particularly user facing, is not super relevant to the conversation. But the fact that we have a new directory with other things happening in Delupi content and that it deserves to be treated differently, that's a better argument. <laughs> Yes, and I think that leads us to, I just wanted to bring up this post yeah. from Rich Tabor because I think it's an important sort of like peek into what they're really thinking about because, you know, at the end of the day, I think the idea was like everyone on WordPress should use the same underlying tools and themes shouldn't show up with like, a, you know, a bajillion lines of code to do the same thing that everyone's doing. And so themes are getting so streamlined down where they're really just the code of paint and there's no functionality in them. And now the idea that like fonts are already stripped out of the theme, like they're not even, they don't sit in the theme, they sit just in the WordPress. The idea that like that could apply in here basically talks about like that could start applying to other things like patterns or temple parts or like design, like style variations and stuff. And the idea is that like some, a lot of these things could start moving out of the theme and being there, like there could be WP content slash patterns or there could be WP content slash I don't, in github there's like a couple examples like yeah. wp content slash i think it was like style variations or something like that i think it was yeah i think i saw that post but i think and like templates and definitely stuff. brought up quite a few times what do you think about that do you like the idea of like taking patterns and templates out of the theme i think it's an interesting idea themes are still going to bundle stuff and then that's going to get pulled out. Does that mean they're going to get be deleted when you install a theme and it comes with some sort of some stuff you either need to install these things separately, or does it mean that it's going to sit in the theme and it's going to sit in this other folder inside the be content? There's a lot of implications here and for cleanup and for not making things redundant that shouldn't be redundant, you know? Uh, well, I mean, one of the things that a lot of the block theme, like builders like Cadence and Generate Press, the ones that build on top of Gutenberg is they're all building these cloud pattern libraries where you, they have a bunch of patterns on a server yeah. and you get access and you pull them locally and stuff. Like they're already sort of doing that. There is the block pattern directory, this idea that like these things can be pulled from places, but I this switched my theme from one full setting thing to another this weekend. And it's it like you lose all of your templates. So any custom post type template, everything, which I get, you know, it makes sense. Like I'm switching themes, but it, that would have been nice. None of the color naming is consistent across WordPress themes. So I have blog posts where I like put a paragraph in like a, with a background color to like do a call out. Yeah. None of those work now. I have to go through and like find and replace the name because we don't have a consistent name of colors. Yeah. When you pull in patterns from other themes, the, the colors never match. That work, I think, has to be done first before this could happen. Yeah. Let me be clear. I think the concept of composability, which seems to be everywhere in the web dev world right now, just in general, whether it's, you know, the 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 previously known as Jamstack world or as the WordPress world, mm -hmm. the concept of composability is as old as web dev itself and yet somehow is getting a fresh new spin on it these days. Uh, which I find really fascinating just to, as a trend. And it's a good idea. But I agree with you that there's work, there's plumbing, there's thought that needs to be mm -hmm. put in before this becomes a viable idea, at least inside WordPress. And, you know, we've had this conversation about design tokens and, you know, consistent naming. And honestly, like, I think it would be nice if we just had some consistent names, like, you know, like primary, secondary, or, or foreground, background, whatever. And, still leaving the ability to customize it. 
yeah. have that filter. You know, let's add that filter. Or if you have more than, say, four colors, you can call them whatever you want. Or maybe there's a suggested naming variation or pattern that they can provide you with. But if you want to create things that yeah. are composable and interchangeable, you need consistency. You do need that. And we don't have that. I Even just the best practice of, like, five colors, you know, I think it's not, like once you get to, like, the tertiary color, you never know if it's going to be like a good contrast with the the prime. Like, and at that point, you do really have to pay attention because that's where you get accessibility issues. Like, oh, our tertiary was dark, but ours was light. You know, these sorts of things. Right. But like five standard colors or whatever, you know, that would be nice. All that sort of stuff. Yeah. It would have made my life easier <laughs> switching themes and stuff like that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like the fact that when I did switch the theme, I could just go into my uh, one old copy and select all the HTML of my template, Command C go to my new one, command paste, and it's immediately there. Like That's nice. Very cool. Like very cool. Like really underrated how nice it is that at least the structure of the HTML is composable in the sense that like I could literally, I could look at somebody else's site and be like, give me your HTML so I can make my landing page look like yours. And it would all work perfectly. Yeah, almost. But yeah. <laughs> except the colors wouldn't work in exactly. the, fonts. In the fonts and oh if they have their spacing done differently with different spacing names or their margin names or their mm -hmm. yeah, or their font size names they're still like i said like when if it's design tokens and they're not consistent it's not composable and therefore that part of it becomes useless the semantic composability is amazing the blocker, mm -hmm. the fact that it can do that, it's awesome. I love, I think that the example you just used illustrated is perfect, but you know, give me your HTML. I'm going to, I'm going to do it too, but. If, but I have a bunch of classes that don't work now in it. Exactly. A bunch of padding classes all through my site. Everything has these padding classes that don't yeah. do anything. Exactly. Exactly. And, and that's now, you, now you have bloat. You have like short code level bloat in some places. I I imagine with all these classes, and then yeah. you're gonna change it, and it's gonna add those classes, and it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Font library it's feature, yeah. We feel I feel good about it. I'm glad it's making it. I'm glad they made it work in the last mile. I think I think fonts. It's like one of the last like big things for the site editor other than like UX, like, yeah, you, there's definitely UX issues, but like feature wise, this is, I mean, I have literal projects where this and synced patterns, which are not coming separate conversation were like the two most outstanding features that I, I was waiting for. Yeah, I agree. I'm glad that for what it's worth, it's nice that when it has come out, it has come out with thought. I am very comfortable and I want to encourage the idea that if something doesn't feel quite right and it still needs more thought, we punt it. We don't just add it for the sake of adding it because now you have backwards compatibility issues and things and it's all so much more, it's so much worse. So thinking about things and adding things to core thoughtfully, which is not what they have done with experimental features in block editor, which is a whole other thing, but thinking about things thoughtfully is a really good thing. So it's okay that it took six versions for this to become a thing. I'm comfortable because we have something here that is really nice now, you know? Yeah. And I, while there are UX like nitpicks, like the placement of the update button and stuff, at the end of the day, like we can all start using this and feel a lot more safe. Whereas that synced patterns that got punted, like I think needed to be and and the other right. features in 6.5 are under the hood a little bit more and are barely starting to get exposed like interactivity api block block bindings api block yeah. hooks so all those are really standout features you're just not really going to see them <laughs> like in this release because they're 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 being properly handled marinated on. totally <laughs> yeah well i'm really excited thanks for walking us through it and if y'all think of you know other things you want to see in the font library, put us in the comments or put it in Twitter because someone just want to see it. Put it in Slack as per that one tavern post from Brian. Oh, yeah. Put it in your feedback where it's going to matter. Yeah. I mean, there's people that can help you direct feedback. If you have feedback, reach, <laughs> reach out to us and we can help you direct your feedback constructively, something I'm learning about. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, I'll see you for the next episode, Brian.
<laughs> See you there. Visit viewsource.fm for the show notes. And if you're enjoying the show, we would love a review on iTunes or a comment on YouTube.